Hi there. Thank you for watching this video. The first of four videos on toxicology and health risk management in my teaching of Introduction to Environmental Science, Lecture 5. I'm KM, an associate professor in the School of Life Sciences, Chinese University of Hong Kong. One of the human sustainability issues is could we survive after we have contaminated our beautiful planet and Earth? From the last century, human activities have been making anthropogenic or human-made contaminants, causing pollution and contamination around the world. This lecture aims to discuss how we understand the toxic effects of these chemicals we produce and how we manage our health risks to handle these chemicals. There are four videos on this lecture. One, pollution and risk assessment. Two, pesticides and trace organics. Three, metal intoxications. And four, health risk management. Chapter eight in the textbook could also help in elaborating the key concepts of these topics. Major threats from the environment could be from the water, soil, and air before entering to our body. The main two types are microorganisms and chemicals. Microorganisms could be bacteria like Salmonella and viruses like HIV, bird flu, West Nile, etc. They could kill immediately and have severe acute toxic effects. Common symptoms include like diarrhea causing dehydration to kill. Also, some parasites such as malaria transmitted via mosquito are causing pandemic diseases in some countries. For the chemicals, the two main types are organic and inorganic, such as metals. The dangerous ones are those persistent, accumulable, or have found magnification while food chains. They usually have chronic effects causing cancer or even obesity. Microorganisms causing emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases include several major ones like E. coli, O157, O104, many enterovirus since we use antibodies, uh, sorry, since we use antibiotics to get rid of them. Superbugs or antibiotic-resistant microbes are now becoming a major threat. There are also, there are also many viruses like uh, hantavirus, influenza viruses, come, become nasty and they are threatening us every year. Our healthcare management system would put much emphasis on preventive medicine data from WHO, World Health Organization, showing our life expectancy is 71.4 years for the global population born in 2015. However, 1.7 billion people need treatment and care. Household air pollution from cooking fields also cause around 4.3 million to die every year. Now, how about road traffic injuries? You hear this all the time in the news. How could we prevent that or couldn't we? Accident is an accident, but if we could be more aware, we could avoid them, couldn't we? This chart already simplified. Explains the public's perception of risk. Some risks are less dangerous, but the public's per perception may think otherwise. Some risks are observable, but some are not that obvious, as shown with low awareness on top, such as DNA technology and adding fluoride in water going down to high or more observable risk like bicycle. The red line at the bottom showing low dread to high dread level from caffeine to a pesticide called DDT. This is perception only, not necessarily the actual health risk. Therefore, it is important to understand the sources of chemicals threatening us daily. First, we manufacture many toxic chemicals due to our ignorance on their toxicities, 
like Agent Orange and byproducts from chlorine-related chemicals, including pesticides. Second, we burn and produce many organic substances that could be toxic from combustion. They are from waste incineration, metal processing, fossil fuel combustion, and vehicle emission. Thirdly, many of these chemicals are persistent and already in the food chains. They are usually in the dairy products, meat, milk, and eggs with high concentrations from bomb magnification effects. We have had many severe cases of pollution causing major environmental health issues, but nowadays, we have more and more cases of contaminations. What levels of contamination can you deal with or put up with? Since the dose makes the poisons, as Paracelsus already pointed out 500 years ago, he said, what is there that is not poison? All things are poison and nothing without poison. Solely the dose determine that a thing is not a poison, and this is the golden rule of toxicology. The dose makes the poison. You have to remember this even if you forget other key concepts mentioned in this lecture. This figure is the toxicity scale of example substance from the most toxic compound of a natural toxin, botulinous toxin of Botox. Dioxin, a man-made toxin, to pesticides, ethanol, sodium chloride, it's up there, could be toxic too. If we consume more salt, when you get old, your blood pressure could be high. How about pesticides like DEHP? Once thought not that toxic practically, now plastic is everywhere. We start to worry its toxic effects. A good example is paracetamol or a common medicine called Panadol. It is useful to block your feeling of headache, but it is a powerful drug that could damage your liver if you overdose it. Here's the key concepts of knowing your drug. Should have a low pharmacological dose, but a high physiological dose to kill to make it a safe drug. Chemicals as drugs should have such benefits over the risk to kill, and it all depends on the dose you use. How do we determine the toxicity of any substance? The answer, the answer is that we have to determine it experimentally and calculate the half level dose LD50. LD50 is the dose that is lethal to half of the population or killing half of the population being studied. We need to obtain a reasonable dose response curve with more kills noticed in higher dose. Thus, the LD50 could be drawn on the curve clearly. A third so dose should also be clearly noted without any significant harm comparing with the controls. For any good drugs, their effective doses should be much lower than that of their lethal doses. Here we are comparing three dose response curves from compounds A, B, and C. Which one is more toxic? Obviously, compound A is more toxic, and it needs a lower dose to kill. And if we use a low dose, that not mean that it is not toxic, just that high dose would have acute toxic effect, low dose would have sub-lethal effects. Using subchronic or moderate effects, time obviously is a crucial factor here, or important factor here. LD50 values are usually determined for 24 hour or 96 hour. Comparing the acute or chronic effects, acute effects are closer to lethal dose with obvious damaged biological functions or pathological outcomes or loss of functions. Whereas for chronic effects, the effects are sublethal. We could use biomarkers to study the effective concentration or EC50. Therefore, special biological effects that should be studied, such as uh, carcinogenesis or liver damage. Modern environmental medicine <clears throat> also study endocrine system and reproduction. Endocrine disruption is the disturbance affecting the endocrine glands from the pituitary gland 
to the adrenal gland and sex organs like ovary and testis. Quite often, endocrine disruptions are related to the reproductive system. The toxic chemicals could have obvious teratoxic effects leading to defects in baby, or even get to the embryos to the next generation, or causing transgeneration effects with epigenomic effects. The last slide here has two MCQs for clicker or clicker questions. One, 0.1% equals to 0 0.1 ppm, 1 ppm, 10 ppm, 100 ppm, or none of the above. Think about this. Here, ppm is part per million. 10 power minus 6, so that's 0 0.000001. Or 0 0.001 is 0 0.1 percent, or 10,000 ppm. So the answer is none of the above. Am I correct? Check it out. Do it yourself to figure out PPM and PPB. Question to ask, which item below is the most important factor in determining the toxicity of a chemical? Its structure, pH, dose, metabolism, and final excretion or clearance? The answer obviously is the golden rule of toxicology. Remember that? Dose. Bye, and thank you for watching.